evening, everyone. My name is Gesa, and today I want to talk about how I want to stop being a perfectionist by writing more imperfect code uh, more often. I have been working as a software developer for over three years now, and I really like writing code and building things. But I felt for quite some time that I don't write as much code as I would like in my own time. And I've also realized that the reason why I haven't been writing as much code as I would like is that I'm a perfectionist. Now, it's already been quite some time ago that I read about a software developer called Jennifer Dewald. She had studied fine arts and she was working in a day job as a bartender when she then decided to become a software developer. So she quit her job and she set herself the challenge to write one app every day for 180 days in a row. Back then when I read this, I was shocked by the idea because it didn't sound like anything that I would ever do. And what I thought was just like these apps, they can't be very good because I mean, she, she only had one day to write them. But I was actually also deeply fascinated by the idea and it just has stuck with me ever since. And recently I went and read the original post that Jennifer wrote in 2016. And what I found interesting in her post in particular was what she said about deadlines, because she said that um, because she had to ship one application every day, she had a deadline to meet every day. And that deadline actually helped her not to get hung up on, on little things. And it also gave her a sense of winning when she met the deadline each day. And this, reference to deadlines actually reminded me of how much I myself need deadlines to get things done. And this is well illustrated by a look at the activity graph of my private GitHub, which until quite recently looked like this. So uh, you can see I didn't really write much code in my own time. And the only times that I actually wrote some code in my free time was when I had some kind of deadline, when I needed to produce code for some proof of concept that I needed for a workshop or a talk. Now, this uh, picture would make sense if I didn't like writing code and building things, but I've always thought of myself as someone who really likes writing code and building things. So I then also ponder like, why, why is it then? Why am I not writing so much code? Is it, am I just not clever enough? Am I not organized enough to write more code? But recently I've come to realize that my, this fundamental problem that I have is something else. It's that I am a perfectionist. I just don't want to put things out there that others might think then, um, that others might then just potentially take apart and criticize. And I don't want to see uh, that what I've built isn't perfect and face the reality that my skills aren't up to the mark yet, where the mark are actually just my very own standards. And the only thing that for a long time has uh, made me throw these concerns overboard uh, was when there were these kinds of deadlines for which I had to produce a working piece of software. Now, when I realized this, I realized that I need a more, a better way to keep my perfectionism in check, because if, uh, if I didn't find a way to keep it in check, then I would never make the progress I want to make and become the developer I want to become. So I realized that I need to develop a healthier mindset towards writing code, one of iterative improvement. So I've therefore then decided to write more imperfect code more often and to also show it to others more often to receive feedback and um, improve. Now, at the same time recently, I've done a bit of reading on learning and skills acquisition because I thought uh, I could get some useful insights for myself in there. And a lot of literature on skills acquisition says that mastering a skill depends mostly on engaging in the right sort of practice over a sufficiently long period of time. Um, because authors of studies on skills acquisition have found that people who have gotten really good at something have somehow managed to break down what they wanted to learn um, and what they needed to be able to, ma uh, to do to master a field or an activity into clear goals or skill levels. And then they've devised exercises or a teacher has helped them devise exercises that allowed them to regularly practice these, uh, these sub skills in a focused way and get feedback. So um, Anders Ericsson, who's actually written a book on this subject has called this 
putting a bunch of baby steps together to reach a longer term goal. And uh, in another place in his books, he nicely sums up the key elements that you need to take care of when it comes to getting really good at something when he says um, you need to get outside your comfort zone, but do it in a focused way with clear goals, a plan for reaching those goals and a way to monitor your progress. And then you also need to figure out a way to maintain your motivation. And when you go and read uh, Geneva Diewald's blog article, it turns actually out that when she built her 180 apps in 180 days, she just intuitively chose a way to learn skills she wanted, um, it, just in a way that really meets these criteria of purposeful practice very well. Right, so before I now go over and explain a little bit more detail what my own plan is and how it can support me in reaching my learning goals and tackling my problem with perfectionism, I'd like to um, quickly explain what I wanna learn and how perfectionism is in the way. And it turns out that actually my current learning goals are just when it comes to building software, are heavily influenced by the nature of my current job as a software consultant. So my current learn learning goals center around skills I need to do um, just um, a good uh, job at my job. And um, it's all about me becoming a generalist uh, or enough of a generalist to choose and use available technologies uh, wisely to build applications with them that deliver value. And I also need to get just very good at understanding and integrating technologies in a sensible way and at structuring code well and developing software incrementally. Right, so what could I do to, to learn these things uh, better and how is perfectionism in the way of it? I've always found, or I've always been fond of the idea of having personal programming projects, not just as uh, a thing that's really fun, but also as um, an additional opportunity for learning skills that I want to gain uh, to get better at my day job. And uh, I also thought just if I build my own applications, I can build what I want and that will keep me engaged in the long run. So it could just really give me the regular kind of practice that's important for, for mastery. Now, my own perfectionism has led to several problems when starting out on my personal projects. First of all, I, I will just easily get hung up um, on, on, on details and then I won't start because I think I feel I just don't have the perfect plan yet and I don't have the perfect knowledge yet to do the project. Or else I would maybe start on the project but then stop early during the execution because I felt the code I wrote was very badly structured and I just couldn't bear looking at it anymore. And then thirdly, um, I in general, don't really dare to request external help or feedback with my projects because I fear that it will be bad and not useful and just demotivate me. Right, so what could I do? What could be my plan to get better at the things I want to master in a sustainable way? Because obviously I won't quit my job um, but because I'm, I'm just learning so much um, all the time on my day job. And uh, on the other hand, I also don't want to spend all my uh, time in front of my computer, no matter how much I love programming. So instead, I started out with the following plan. I want to build one web application per month and deploy it on um, just to the cloud, to production, um, which is actually a Kubernetes cluster that I operate at home. And uh, by the way, this cluster was actually one of the few personal projects that I ever brought into a working state because I gave a talk about it a while ago. Right, so, so like this, I'll have one deadline per month. And then I've set myself a few additional guidelines that will that are supposed to just help me keep my perfectionism in check. I will choose well-defined problem statements and simple tech stacks for the applications. For example, just use when in doubt, vanilla JS and React for front end, and something like Flask or Spring Boot for as a back end uh, framework. And then also, I will automate everything from the start, both my local development setup and the path to production, uh, including tests. That will mean I'll always be able to deploy changes that I make to the code to production on the push of a button. And this is good because it means fast feedback, but it also means that I can come back to the project and get set up and uh, back into the context quickly if I take a break. When building the application um, and automating everything along the way, 
I want to adopt the way of developing software described in the book, Growing Object-Oriented Software Guided by Tests. That, books, uh, that book recommends that we build a walking skeleton of the application first. And that's a minimal slice of the application that already includes all components of it and that can be already deployed to production or to a production-like environment. Just doesn't have to do anything exciting yet. It can just be showing a landing page that displays some values from a database. And then once I have the skeleton app, I will then grow the functionality of the application incrementally with the help of tests. So for each new feature, I will write an overarching end-to-end uh, -end test. And then while working on making it pass, I go and add lots of unit and uh, integration tests. And this approach has a number of benefits, but the main benefit that I see for myself is that I will focus on working incrementally in small steps while not losing touch with the bigger picture. Uh, so the guiding principle in this walking skeleton approach is that you always have the application in a working state at any moment, but each of its components doesn't have to be perfect yet or has a full set of features yet. And then finally, I want to try and adhere to one very useful principle in the software industry, which is make it work, then make it right and then make it better. Where better can just mean faster or also just, it can mean introducing abstractions to improve the internal structure of the code. Um, so for any technical decision that comes up or any problem that I need to solve, I will just go with the simplest solution first. And uh, my only minimal requirement is that uh, it should be safe enough so that I don't get hacked immediately and my cluster gets made part of some botnet. Yeah, so that's how I'm currently trying to learn how to build better software, how to be become a better programmer. I, uh, in a sense, want to turn my personal programming projects into opportunities for purposeful practice. And in this way, um, at the same time, make sure that I don't abandon them early. Uh, I want to get into the habit of building uh, the projects incrementally and then improving them iteratively. And I feel that I'm on a good way of being just becoming less perfectionist about writing code, but will it work? Well, we'll know when we'll all meet again next year at International Women's Day um, 2022, when I've either built 12 new apps or, or haven't, but in any case, I'll be able to report on how it went. And finally, if you have any ideas or suggestions for me, any kind of feedback, please, get in touch. I would really appreciate that. You can find me on the PyLady Slack or just on Twitter under my Twitter handle. Thank you very much.